How's it going lads? This fella here is a pole aid that I've just finished working on. So it's a very primitive design. You just push down on this yoke here and you're moving a pole up there, which is spinning around our workpiece here. And all the while that's happening, we have a chisel held up to us that we can use to shape our piece. Now, over the summer just gone, uh, I went to a lot of old craft fairs. Uh, I was set up myself um, doing a bit of green woodworking and almost all the other woodworkers um, there had their own pole aid. So I reckon it was high time I get one. So here's how we made it. So our journey begins with this piece of spruce here. Now I'm going to plane one side perfectly smooth and flat with my Stanley 605 here. So this is a new plane I've gotten recently enough and it's a slightly more uh, higher end version of the number five. And so far it seems to be going well for me, but the reason we need to get this plane perfectly flat is so that we can cut out the mortise that the big tall part of the leg is gonna eventually slot into. So you can see we're just using our mallet and our chisel here to mark out either end of the mortise and we also use our marking gauge to figure out the width of it. And then once I'm happy with that, I can cut out a slight bit of the edge with the chisel and that makes it a bit easier for the auger to go in. Now, the auger I'm using here is a scotch auger that was gifted to me by a blacksmith over summer. I sharpened it up and as you can see, it is cutting right well. Now this is a very satisfying tool to use. You can really feel the crunch of the wood as the fibers get ripped out of it and up the spiral. Uh, it is the second most satisfying auger I think I have in this video. Stay tuned for that because in a minute I'm going to be pulling out a tool we recently restored and it is even more fun. So the scotch auger can only get us so far. Eventually we're going to have to remove the rest of the material with a chisel. So I have an old Sheffield steel chisel here and we're just using that to kind of hog away at all the material that's left. Now people always comment why do I choose to use hand tools always. There's a number of reasons but one of them is that hand tools are a lot more satisfying than power tools. You're right I probably could get a mortiser and uh, bore this out in a matter of seconds but, but it's not nearly as satisfying as doing it all by hand. And as well you get a perfect result when you use a mortiser. When you're cutting them by hand oftentimes the, the inside of the walls are more rough and apparently this allows for a stronger grip. To be honest, I haven't noticed a massive difference between the two, but uh, but this is the way I've cut all my mortises in the last two years, and I haven't had one let me down yet. So we can see there now the inside of the mortise, it is looking nice and square. The bottom will look a bit rough just because it's kind of hard to get at that with a chisel, but with the mortise done, we can now move on and work on the tenon that will eventually slot into the mortise. So the first thing we need to do with any tenon is mark it out, and we can see I'm using a big 12 inch square and a lead pencil for that. Once we have it marked out, I just trace that line with my chisel and make kind of a, a path that eventually I'll follow with a saw. But once we have everything marked out, I'll then put the beam into the vise and come along with my rip cut saw. This is a distant rip cut saw. I paid 10 euro for it and it's one of the first saws I ever restored. So we've sharpened it recently and we can see it is working its way down along the wood very nicely. So that's what we'll use to take down the shoulders. Then we'll come along with the chisel and remove that excess part there. Same story with the wider part of the shoulder. Now, a bit more work this time with the rip cut saw, but eventually we make our way down with the shoulder. And then come along with the chisel. This job I actually thought was pretty satisfying, just hocking away at the piece of wood, making a deeper cut every time until eventually the piece just cracked off where you wanted it to. So with the mortise and the tenon both cut, I did some last minute adjustments with the plane there before trying to fit them together. Now this was a piece of footage I took without wearing my cap, which is a no-no, so this is cropped in, hence the low quality. But we can see there, uh, it fits nicely, and this is where I make my first big mistake. So I'm cutting some uh, dowels, you can see there, with a the spoke shave, just to make sure we can lock the mortise and tenon together. But then... I don't have my thinking cap on when I'm about to bore the holes and I bore the holes in the complete wrong place. You can see there now that those holes will do absolutely nothing. I'm just going to be boring through the leg. It's not going to go through the mortise or the tenon. So I drive them in and I realize a few minutes later that I've done something wrong. So, so we're back to square one. I basically took the thing apart and I uh, cut that tenon one more time. And then this time when I put the tenon in, I made sure to bore the holes in the right place which is what we're doing here. And then we drive the dowels through and all is well once more. Now doing this was my favorite part of this build. So for this, we get to use our beam drill that we restored in a recent video to cut out some large mortises that we're eventually gonna make a wedge to hold the whole thing in place. But you'll see that down the line, but you can see there, we're just twisting it and it is cutting through this big leg here like it is nothing. 
close up there now you can see it just work its way through the wood bringing up all the shavings that's what i was saying earlier this is a bit more satisfying than using the scotch auger we used to cut the other mortises at the start of the video i was given this beam drill in exchange for two milking stools i made last summer and it is definitely a tool i think i would be treasuring for a very long time like look at that now just like the legs we also have to use a chisel to finish up this mortise here so so again we're using that nice sheffield steel to come along and clear away the rest of that and once we have that done we can move on to our next tenon so you can see there now we're using both the rip cut and cross cut soft this is the same rip cut i was using last time and funnily enough i stepped on the triangular file that I would have used to sharpen this saw, so I'm going to have to head down to the shop and buy another one because otherwise all my saws are going to go blunt. But either way, we got that done, and then we came along with a cross-cut saw to cut the shoulder. You can see there now, it's a nice old cross-cut saw as well that I fixed up not so long ago. I think I also paid 10 euro for that at some market. And you can see there now, it's making neat work of that wood. And for the two final sides then, we can come back along with the rip-cut saw one last time, and then stick our chisel in there and just pop that sucker right off. So the next step was to attach the body to the legs to make sure that they actually fitted each other. And once I knew that they did fit each other, I just scribed a line on the tenon that was going the whole way through. And that leaves us a mark uh, wherein we can actually cut out another mortise upon that tenon that we will eventually drive a wedge into that lock everything into place. So here we are now using the scotch auger once again to cut the mortise through the tenon. So to do the last bit of cleaning up with the chisel, I actually took this outside and put it on these cast iron stands. Now the same fella that gave me the beam drill also gave me these two cast iron stands and I use them the whole time just for like working on larger pieces outside. You can even kind of throw a few planks across them and you have a quick table set up. Now the next thing we had to work on was the wedge that would hold all of this together. So here I am now with the number 605 again, planing this wedge nice and smooth. And the next thing we're gonna do is actually test it all out. So we have everything set up here and ready to go. And we're just gonna place the wedge into the mortise and drive it home with the mallet. And there we can see now everything's locked together, good and tight. And we can just pop that right back out when we need to take the thing apart. I'll be bringing this lathe up and down the country a lot. So it's just important to me that I can take it apart and put it back together. Uh, that it's good and strong and easy to do. So the next thing I needed to do was cut a big massive long mortise. Running the entire length of the body. So that we could slide the chuck up and down it. When we're working on different length pieces of wood. So for that we spent an hour or two in the garage. First of all lining out the cut with our mallet and chisel here. And then we set up the beam drill and we just kept on cutting hole after hole before coming back last night in the garage and just cleaning it all out with a chisel. So I don't think I've ever had so much fun boring holes, but that beam drill was some fun to use. Uh, I thought at the start I might just cut a small hole at the end and then work my way along with the saw, but no, I'm definitely happier now I did it with the beam drill. Now for the metal part of the chuck, the part that the wood will actually be touching and holding it in place, I have some threaded bar here, and the first thing I did with that was, here's a rare scene of me with a power tool, was bring it up to the bench grinder, and I just grinded it to a point. Notice the safety spectacles. So once I had a point at one end, I stuck it in a vise, heated it up with the gas torch there, and then bent it. And you can see there now why we bent it. We have a handle that we can twist to adjust it, and that'll allow us to lock bits of wood in place down the line. So it was finally time to work on the chucks themselves. You can see there now, I have one already done. And it's a similar principle. It's another tenon that runs the whole way through the body and then it's wedged in place. And the reason that works so well is that we can just pop out that wedge and move that chuck up and down the body. So like I said, we can work on different size pieces of wood now. So obviously we did the same rip cutting and cross cutting with our saws, cutting everything out with a chisel. But the thing we did slightly different with this one was use our brace and bit to cut a hole that is slightly smaller than the threaded bar we just worked on. So we use our brace and bit for that. And we can see there then that our adjustable metal chuck fits right into that. Something else we did a little bit different with this piece, uh, since there's a smaller mortise at the bottom where the wedge will sit in, we used a brace and bit instead of a scotch auger. So I think it's a bit of a nicer, more comfortable tool to work with. And we can see there now that bit is nice and sharp. It is just eating its way through the wood. So with that, we are nearly finished working on the actual lathe itself. Now I know it's very blocky. I'll come back later down the line and refine everything and make it look nicer. But for now, I just need it to work. So we're going to take it for a very quick test drive here. We're just going to lock this piece of wood in place. Give it a quick spin. And now that we know that the chuck and the lathe is actually working, we can move on and figure out how we're going to propel it.
Now this is going to be a pole laid, so we need to find some sticks. So I headed down to the forest and I picked out some, I think this is beech, and these are just branches. I took off some trees and we can see there now that we're tying them using a square lashing into an A-frame. So once I had everything tied up, I made a quick adjustment to the chuck so I could add a fence. Uh, tied it up with a bit of sisal and you can see here now everything seems to be working like a treat. So here I am just turning a leftover piece of beech just to kind of test it out. I need to get myself a nicer set of chisels for turning. This is just kind of a gouge I found in the garage. But yeah, I'm delighted to have this project out of the way. This will be very useful for making uh, parts of chairs and tool handles and there's no doubt this will get plenty of use down the line. It's also an incredibly satisfying tool to use. I think this whole project only cost me about 70 quid which is pretty good all things considered and I'm sure it'll serve me well for years to come. So there we go lads, I know at the minute it's very much rough and ready uh, but I'll refine it and smoothen out the curves of the legs over time but, but hopefully come next spring I'll have this fella on the road and some of you guys living in Ireland might actually get to see this in person and have a go off it. But other than that, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Good luck!